and then this whole entire rail is filled with high, high pressure fuel. So for the last six or seven months, my van has been cutting out and it won't start back up again. I've noticed it while I get out of traffic lights and sometimes it takes about 15 minutes to restart. It will just completely cut out like it stalls and when you turn the key over and nothing happens, it will just be there like and it was just trying and trying and trying and eventually it will fire up at really low revs. Uh, I've sometimes got out, reset the battery isolator and this doesn't make any difference. Uh, it's even happened when I was pulling up from second to third gear, it just completely cut out in the middle of the Lake District on a single track road. So it's been a bit of a nightmare, it's been really intermittent. I took it to a garage and they said it could be the stop start in the van. The van doesn't even have stop start technology, so I was a bit like, oh, you know, I don't really know, a bit baffled, so I kind of thought I'm just going to leave it until it completely breaks. But then, funnily enough, I got sent a scanner from Carly, and then I plugged this in, and turned out it was a fuel pressure sensor that had gone, so essentially the van was thinking it had no fuel in the system, so sometimes it's cutting out and stalling. So I didn't actually know how to fix the fuel sensor, so I went over to my mates, and he fixed it up for me, so it's really, really simple to do. Essentially just pull out the sensor, swap it over and put the new one back in. So it was really interesting to see and it was really cool to learn how to do it. But it was interesting for a fault that's very intermittent and I just thought oh, I'll just leave it until the van completely breaks down and then get a repairman out to fix it. It was great to actually find out what the problem is and then fix it. So it was brilliant. I'm hoping I can don't have to undo these. Well, I can undo that and that and move this one out of the way. And then I have to undo that one and then get in here and undo the bottom okay. of the main line. Top there, that's out of the way and then pull it out. Off. Last time I saw him, I have a of it through that pipe that I've removed. Um, and then this whole entire rail is filled with high, high pressure fuel. And then it gets distributed through each pipe. Um, so all of these pipes to the injectors are pressurized with fuel. Then these electronic contacts on the top inject uh, the computer with the ECU will tell it when it needs each one to inject. Yeah. So it sends a little bit of power to each one. Um, and then when it does that, it releases a little bit of fuel, which injects straight into the cylinder. It's a long old thread. It is, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. And another new one over here somewhere. So there shouldn't be any differences. Make sure you put the new one back in, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can sort of see what I'm doing. Yeah, you can see loads. Yeah. yeah. I thought you wouldn't be allowed to do that. Really? Yeah. He's, um, he, doesn't, he doesn't mind mundane job because he's come from the... Reverses and... Try to spin the bike over. No, he's like he'd hardly say hello to the boss. Oh. He's not mean to. Oh really? He kept saying, "I saw are you enjoying yourself." He said, yeah, it's all right. I said, "Could be one bit of advice. Probably when the boss comes over and asks how you're getting on, don't say you're getting on all right. You say like <laughs> you're loving it or you're really enjoying it or something like that." Because if somebody said to me, "Oh, it's all right," it doesn't wouldn't really fill me with the most confidence. But I was gone about ten minutes because we were parked quite far away from the machine. Yeah. I said to him, I said to him when we left, I said, um, I said, oh, what did you and Mr. Carl talk about while I was gone then? There was nothing, we stood in complete silence. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Back up. Uh, there you go. Like, you know, I so if you've got any problems, it could be worth getting your own scanner and it can save you loads of money instead of going to the garage and get right to the root of the problem. And then you could take that code from the scanner into the garage and say, I've got a fault in my car, it's this, can you guys fix it? It'll save you loads of money in the long run and then you know what's going on. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.